in the name of God, the compassion, the merciful. <clears throat> so what we have been discussing uh, so far was about the significance of offering of peace or greetings of peace. And we said that this is the way the prophets greeted the way the people of heaven would greet each other, the, pay, the way angels greet, whether in this world or at the time of death or at the time of entering heaven or inside heaven. And then the way God greets in heaven. Then we said, the Quran tells us that uh, God instructed prophets to offer this greeting of peace. So we already talked about uh, the story of Moses and how God said, you know, he should go to Pharaoh. And the ending was, was salamu ala man al huda. Verse 47 of chapter 20. The next case is about Prophet Muhammad. God is telling Prophet Muhammad that he should greet people who go to him by offering this salam. Uh, verse 54 of chapter 6. وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِنَا Yes, 6.54. Chapter 6, verse 54. وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِنَا فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ when those who believe in our communications, in our signs or communications, come to you, God is saying, the prophet, when the believers come to you, say, peace be upon you. So, God is asking the prophet to say peace to the believers. And we read in the history that prophet was always preceding others in saying salam. He was not waiting for others to say salam. Uh, you know, we are supposed when we meet, we say salam to each other. And it is good that if you are younger, you say salam first. Or if you, for example, enter into a room and there are other people, the visitor says salam. But the prophet was always trying to be the first person to say salam to other people. And there is a story that once a young man wanted to precede. So he went and tried to hide himself behind a corner so that when the prophet comes, he jumps and says, Salamun Alaikum. And when the prophet came and he jumped, he was not able to speak. So the prophet said, peace be upon you. Then he was able to just reply. <laughs> and I think there is also a, a point here that not only it's because of the humbleness of the prophet, but also because we are not able to offer peace to the prophet. You know? So he can offer peace more than what we can you know, do. So God is telling the prophet, when the believers come to you, say peace be upon you. In a sense, it also means that God is sending peace to us. Yeah, Because for example, I say, uh, when you see so and so, say peace be upon you. In a sense, it means that transmit my greetings to that person. So it's God also offering peace. Kataba rabbukum ala nafsihir rahmah. Uh, this phrase is also very important in the discussion about God's mercy. We use this verse as one of the few verses that says God has made it actually necessary and compulsory for himself to be kind and merciful. Although he's not under any law or, you know, any, any for example, uh, enforcement, of, but he has undertaken this as a necessity for himself to be kind and merciful. Whoever does something bad out of ignorance and then repents and tries to reform, 
God is most forgiving and most merciful. Also, the Quran tells us that when we visit each other, we should seek permission to enter the house of each other. So if I come to visit you, I should seek your permission. And I also should say salam to you when I enter. So chapter 24, verse 27. Chapter 24, verse 27. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu la tadkhulu buyutan ghayra buyutikum hatta tasta'nisu. So, all those who believe, do not enter houses other than your own until you have announced your arrival. So, you seek, you know, you inform that I am coming and you get permission. And, wa tusallimu ala ahliha. And invoked peace upon the people who are there. So when I enter your house, I should seek permission and I also should offer you peace. Also, if uh, the Quran says, you know, that if there are people that they don't accept the revelation. They don't want to believe. God says to the prophet in verses 87 to 89 of chapter 43. Okay, if they don't accept, tell them that peace be upon you. And you would know yourself. So you don't need you know, to fight with them. Just say, peace be upon you. We don't want to fight. In future, you yourself would understand what was the right position. Also, the Quran says in chapter 25, verse 63, that the servants of God walk on the earth humbly, and if ignorant, which we said yesterday, you remember, we said in Arabic, jahl means sometimes not to know and sometimes not to act wisely. So if those who don't know or those who don't act rationally, address them impolitely, disrespectfully, they don't fight, they don't you know, repeat the same thing. They just say, peace be upon you. So if someone wrongs you or uses bad words, you just pray for the peace. Also, the Quran tells us that every year we have one night, as you know, uh, in the months of Ramadan, we have one night which we call Night of Qatr. Night of power, or night of measure, or night of might, or night of decree. There are different translations. Uh, we believe that this is the most important night in the year. Uh, this is the night in which our affairs for the next 12 months will be decided by God. The same night was the night in which the Quran was revealed altogether, because Quran has two types of revelation. Quran comes in 23 years in a gradual process, but Quran also came all together at once in this night. So this is the night that is very important for us and we try not to sleep and to keep all night awake and pray and you know worship and ask for forgiveness. So one of the things that we find about this night, if you go to chapter 97, yes. Uh, God says that this night is better than 1,000 months. But 1,000 months which don't have this night inside, okay? So it means not 1,000 months, including months of Ramadan. All the angels and the spirit come down with all the affairs in this night, then the Quran says, this night is salamun. 
here hatta matla al fajr is peace this night is not only peaceful is peace till fajr till down the uh, dawn uh, in the morning Bef you know we have uh, like for example now uh, it's about 3 a.m. that is the dawn and then after some time it's sunrise so that is when we pray our morning prayer so this night is peace so you understand the significance of peace when God says that there is one night which is the best night in the year in which the Quran is revealed in which all the angels and the Holy Spirit come down in which all our affairs are decided so this is the night of peace so you understand how important is peace also if you go to the verses 126 and 127 of chapter 6 this was about time so the best time is described as time of peace also about heaven one of the names of heaven in the Quran is Darus Salam you know the capital of Tanzania is Darus Salam because uh, Muslims you know there they wanted to have a good name for this city so they called it Darus Salam it means the abode of the peace so the Quran says that Lahum Darus Salam in the they would have the abode of peace in the presence of their Lord. So the most important time is peace. The most important place, which is heaven, is the abode of peace. And perhaps above all this. Peace is actually one of the names of God. If you were, go to the verse 23 of chapter 59. Chapter 59, verse 23. Huwa Allahu ladhi la ilaha illa hu. God is the one who there is no God other than him. Al-Malik. The king, the sovereign, Al Qudus, the holy, Al Mu'min, Al Mu'min, sorry, As Salam, then Al Mu'min, As Salam, the peace, Al Mu'min, the giver of Amn, Amn means safety and security. So God is peace and God is the giver of safety and security. Al-Muhaymin, the guardian. Al-Aziz, the majestic or the dignified. Al-Jabbar, the irresistible. Al-Mutakabbar, the supreme. Subhanallah amma yushrikun. May God be glorified with respect to what the polities associate to him. So, God is peace and giver of security and safety. So I don't think there is anything greater than having peace as a name of God. Was that a bad translation? Yeah. Um, the Benin, yeah. Yeah, it's not very accurate. Are there many, many translations? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there are many translations and none of them for us is like a standard translation because for us translation is just translation yeah. Yeah. so translations are not a kind of sacred or you know any person it's the original that you would so arabic time, yes yes yeah, so we many all translations only one quran <laughs> yeah. isn't that right yes, yes. Okay. and you cannot do anything uh, without understanding the text directly because translations come with 
some kind of also interpretation. So the person who has translated has already selected one interpretation and that limits you. So it's very important to go back to the origin. And also I have seen some translators that actually they themselves were not able to understand Arabic. So for example, they have translated from another language, you know, for example, you know, from say English to French or from Farsi to English. This makes it even more difficult because every translation adds some barriers. Pardon? Uh, sorry. Yes. Oh, what happened here? Yes. But uh, again here, for example, Al-Mu'min, he says the keeper of faith, but the better translation is the giver of safety. The giver of safety. Because uh, Mu'min is used in the sense of believer, but in the sense of, uh, for God, is not believer, it's giver of amn. It's not from Iman, it's from Amn, it means he gives security, he gives safety. Uh, in uh, modern Arabic for uh, Security Council, they say Majlisul Amn. For the United Nations, you know, the Security Council is a Majlisul Amn. So Amn means security. Or for example, for security you know, forces, they say Qawwatul Amn. So Amn means security. So, this is also a name of God. Then, in the last part of the paper, I say, human beings are created in the way that they would not feel satisfied in this world without connection to God. We have many desires deep inside us that cannot be fully satisfied in this material life unless we are able to understand our relation with God. The desire for absolute and infinite beauty, power, and love can only be satisfied with knowledge of an approximation to God, the absolute, the infinite. So in us, there is deep desire for absolute truth, absolute beauty. And we go to something, then we realize that this is not what we wanted. We wanted more. So maybe I think money is what can give me satisfaction. I go for money, but I see it's not solving my problem. I think if I have power, but I go and become, for example, even president, I feel still I'm not satisfied. The Quran says... Chapter 84, verse 6. Ya ayyuhal insan, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kathan famulaqi. O man, O human being, you are truly toiling on towards the Lord, painfully toiling, till you meet him. So it means that in this world, we are always struggling till we finally meet God. Or in chapter 13, verse 28, the Quran says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُ Those who believe and whose hearts find satisfaction in the remembrance of God. Then as a general rule, it says it's with remembrance of God that hearts find satisfaction. So I have also quoted here some uh, supplications. And then I say, man's yearning for peace is yearning for God. Man's yearning for peace is yearning for God who himself is peace. The real peace that man seeks and aspires to is the peace of heart. And this peace can only be achieved and maintained through connection to God. 
to be cut off from anything other than God means to be free from reliance on things other than God. So it doesn't mean that you isolate yourself from people or society, but it means that you don't rely on anyone other than God at the same time that you can be actively involved in social life. And see everything as his sign and manifestation of his power and grace. The true servants of God, whether they are rich or poor, powerful or weak, famous or unknown, in ease or in adversity, and whether they live alone or inside the society and with crowd, they are totally mindful of God and remember him in immense. And therefore they have ultimate, uh, an ultimate peace. And then I have a discussion here that how the Quran introduces himself, uh, itself as a book that offers ways of peace. This verse is also very important. If you go to chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. If you go to the verse 16, okay. Yahdi bihillahu man ittaba' ridwanahu subula salam. Those who seek the pleasure of God, God with the Quran shows them the ways of peace. So Quran is the book of God who is peace and shows you the ways of reaching peace. Subula salam. It means that all the instructions that the Quran gives us for personal, for social life, are all in order to reach peace, external and internal peace. Subula salam. And then we have to learn how the Quran teaches us to, for example, treat each other, treat a neighbor, treat you know, um, a stranger, treat people of different faith or no faith, so that in all these corners of life we achieve peace so any reading of the Quran that doesn't bring peace means misreading because it's the book of God who is peace and it's going to take you to a boat of peace and showing you the ways of peace so how can then someone read the Quran as a manual for killing this is totally misreading. So I stop here, and then if we have chance after this uh, your presentations, then uh, we can continue with another paper on life, value of life. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, I suggest we do not have a discussion.